Oh, hi everyone, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. You just caught me in the middle of putting a back screen at the back of the greenhouse here, and I think over the upcoming uh, winter months, it should make filming a lot easier. And I plan to bring my table in here too, so you know when it's you know when the temperatures outside are freezing, we can do some filming in here, and I have a nice back screen here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But uh, that's not what I was going to do in this video. What I was going to show you is. Um, Somebody left a comment in, in uh, the comment section on one of my videos. And uh, you may know, if you've been following my channel for a while, that I've been experimenting with a few air layer projects. So, and I've uh, air layered a uh, paper bark maple or an AC Grissium and also a Tamarex. Now, uh, somebody left a comment saying, Well, Gav, you're doing this at a funny time of year. You should ideally be air layering during the spring. So, what are you going to do over the upcoming winter months to protect your air layers? From the freezing winter temperatures. So in this video I thought we'd tackle that problem and I'll show you what my plan is and what I'm going to do. Right so the air layering projects. Um, so I have, this is the uh, Tamarex that I air layered and you know I've never seen anybody air layer a Tamarex tree before so I thought well I don't didn't want the tree this long. Uh, there's a fair bit of side branching going on already so I figured if I, you know, cut this down, I might encourage some, uh, you know, lower shoots to, to pop and form branches or maybe a new leader and uh, should make for quite a nice bonsai. But I didn't want to waste the top, so I decided to put an air layer on that. The, there is a bit of greener, you know, the green growth just up above. So, you know, I'm hoping that will take. The other one is this big chap and this is the Acegrissium. So you can see... I've air layered this part here and I've air layered this part here. But in this video, I was going to show you what I'm going to do to uh, protect these over the upcoming winter months. Right, so to do this job, what we're going to need, we're going to need some vet tape, we're going to need some bubble wrap. We're going to need some sticky tape and we're going to need a pair of scissors. So with this piece of bubble wrap, I have three air layers, you know, two on the Acegrissium and one on the Tamarex. So I did, I wanted to cut this into three strips. So I think what I'll do, I'll cut it just down here. Just put that on there so it doesn't blow away. And then I'll cut down the middle here. Just to make two, wee, with the wind's blown. Just to make two strips, just like so. And then we can do the same for this one. Let's move that out of the way so you can, you can see. Let's just put that over there just like so. And we'll just cut this just like so. Right, so the idea now would be just to wrap this around your air layer bag. Now, we are quite fortunate down here in the south of England that our winter temperatures don't tend to get that low. Uh, we might touch minus 10. I mean, there's a big question mark over that, a big if, you know, because that it doesn't happen that often. And generally, we get down to my, about minus 5, possibly minus 7, and those are nighttime temperatures. But yeah, minus 10, possibly. But that's down here. You know, other parts of the country, their, their uh, winter temperatures are slightly lower. And of course, you know, in some other countries around the world, you know, your winter temperatures are even lower than that. But I think for me down here in, in the south of England, this method should work absolutely fine. Now, I know I did say that these, this is an idea to stop them from freezing. Now, I am also going to keep these in the greenhouse. So again, all of these, you know, additional things are going to help prevent this from freezing, uh, from, you know, experiencing any frost, anything like that. So anything you do to, to protect your air layer will work, but it's, it comes in layers. So this is one layer, the vet tape will be another layer, Put it, putting it in the greenhouse will be another layer, all in the aid of keeping this warm and aiding the, the tree in producing roots. Right, so what we would do, just watching that little branch just down here, we we'll just take the bubble wrap and just gently wrap it around. Actually, before we do that, I might just poke that piece of wire down, otherwise it's gonna pierce my Bubble wrap, there we go. We'll go again, so just wrap it around. And all you're doing is creating a little cushion. 
you know, nothing fancy really, just wrapping it around, just like so. And then what you do is, might be a best, you know, better idea to cut your tape before you do it, but you just get some tape, just like that, wrap that back round, take your tape, and then just wrap it around just like so. And we can just cut that like so. And then that would just create a nice little cushion. Now I'm not going to worry about the top and the bottom because this is where we're going to put our vet tape. Right, so the vet tape, all we're going to do is just unravel this just like so. Now this stuff generally does stick to itself. So we shouldn't have any issues with getting this to stick. But all we would do is just wrap this around your bubble wrap. And this will do two things. It'll add another layer of protection and it will also keep it somewhat dark. And of course you do need darkness to create roots. Uh, you might be wondering why did I use clear bags? And uh, there's, well, th there's a couple of reasons. One, I've heard a few people say that using, there isn't any benefit in using black bags, albeit some people do swear by it. You know, there are others out there who say that it's beneficial. And the other idea was why I use the clear bag method was because I saw some other YouTubers over in Asia use that method and they had some fantastic results. So I thought I'd give it a go myself and see if I could do the same thing. So there we go. So that's just created a little cushion just around the Tamarax, just around the air layer. I don't need to tie that off. It's, it's, this stuff is quite sticky anyway and it sticks to itself. So it should be absolutely fine. And that is just going to create a nice little cushion. As I said before, we're going to put this back into the, the uh, greenhouse, or stay away from frost, and that this should protect it over the winter months. Right, so with the Ace Grissium, this is going to be a bit more of a challenge because these branches are slightly, you know, closer together, but let's give it a go. Let's take a bit of my bubble and uh, let's try to wrap that just in here. Let's just put that just in there like so, round again, now this isn't easy to do, uh, it's sure a lot easier to do the Tamarax because you just had a sting, uh, you know, single trunk or single stem but you know the idea would be the same with this, we just gently wrap this around just to keep the air, layer, the air layer nice and warm. And I think if we just take that around there like so. And that more or less holds itself. So we do the same for the other one. Bit of bubble, up it around. Round and round we go. And obviously the more layers of bubble you do, the better it is. You know, if you just do one one single sheet, then you probably won't have enough protection, but because I've gone round and round and round, it adds to the protection. And for this one, it might just need a little bit of tape. So just take some tape, cut it off like so, and tape that just in there, like that. Now, when it comes to the vet tape, uh, getting vet tape into, you know, into this branch is going to be a bit of a challenge. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a piece or length. It's maybe about that long. It's about just over a foot. Cut it off just like so. And then maybe we might be able to thread that just in there. So if we put the, start it off just in there like that. Keep it nice and straight. This is one of those things that you think to yourself, yeah, that's going to be a great idea. That'll work. And then when you come to do it, you face challenges like this and you think, is this, you know, was this really a good idea? <laughs> I mean, you know, but I'm sure, you know, from what I've read and from uh, the different ideas that people have posted online, this is a good, a good plan. And, uh, but, you know, 
an idea that many people have had success with. So you can see I've just gone around to this branch here just because I couldn't get the tape in there. But that should be absolutely fine. Just squeeze it in, make sure it's nice and tight, and that should be absolutely fine. All right, let's do the other one. Right, in much the same way, cut a length. We'll do a bit more than a, a foot, so that's probably about 14, 14 inches. Cut that off just like so. And this one should be a fair bit easier. Just take it, wrap it around, just like that. And that, I think, will do the trick. So these are our little air layer pods. This fact tape will just keep that bubble wrap on and should protect it enough of the upcoming winter months. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take the Tamarax and the Ace Grissium and put these back into the greenhouse. Oh, I think the postman's just arrived. And it looks like we've just received a little package. So let's just put the the paper bark maple just down here. Let's put the tomorrow down there too and find out who sent us this and what's inside. So you can see I've just you know crossed out my address because you know I don't want to broadcast that all over YouTube and I've crossed out the sender's address. Now this has come from a chap up in Yorkshire so let's uh, open this up just take some scissors to the end just like that. And what is inside this little package? There's a letter, and it looks like a little bag of seeds. Yeah, they look pretty cool. So who are these from? These, uh, these have come from Jason Hanrahan. So thanks, Jason. Uh, this is Jason over on the Bonsai Garden. Uh, we'll put a link to his channel just up here and in the description below. He's a fantastic guy, puts out some really good videos. Uh, but he yeah, sent us this little letter and he says, Hi Gavin, uh, here are the assorted maple seeds and spindle as promised. Good luck with germinating these kind of regards, Jason. So yeah, thanks again, Jason. That's, that's excellent. And you probably already are, but you know, if you haven't heard of Jason and you haven't seen his channel, I do strongly recommend you go over to his channel and check out some of what he does. He's brilliant when it comes to editing. He does some really artistic, creative videos. And yeah, it's worth watching some of his videos. And if you like what he does, why not subscribe? So I'm just gonna lay these seeds out on this piece of tissue here. And if we just open up this bag, you can see there's a variety of different maple seeds. Now, I believe these are Japanese maples and uh, spindles, which are otherwise known as uh, unimus, I think they're called, unanimous, unanimous. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, yeah, a good few seeds in this bag. There's still more to come. You get those last ones out. Come on out, you come. Let's turn the bag inside out. Just like that. And I think that is all. Yeah, that's just a bit of wing. So these are all of the seeds. That's great. So yeah, we can see we have a variety of maples, all different sizes. There's a rather large one with a berry stuck to the end. And we have some smaller ones. And there's a small one there. Yeah, fantastic. So this is just a bucket of the cocoa mix. And all I've done, I've just taken a block, much like this, soaked it in a bucket of water, and this is what you end up with. And I, I prefer to mix up a lot beforehand. And then of course what you can do is come back to this as and when you need it. Like, like now, if you just take a, a flat pot just from here, just like this one here, I think that'll be large enough. And then what you can do is just come to this as and when you need it, just fill up your pot, now the only thing with this is when you if you leave it a while and it gets damp, it clogs. So it's, it can be a real job to you know, get your hand in and break it up. But the good thing is when you use this as a potting soil, it's nice and light. 
it's nice and light, it dries out fast, and it, it absorbs water, which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, it holds water, but it dries out. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what it does. And it makes a fantastic medium for propagating seeds. Uh, of course, you could put cuttings in this mix too, and uh, they should root brilliantly. But this is what I use for all of my seeds, or what I've been using for all of my seeds. And, um, you know, fingers crossed, it works out well. And this is just as simple as putting them on top, no particular order, it doesn't really matter. Just putting them on top. Keeping it really simple, just stick them all on top. Again, you don't really need to be too neat with this. Uh, I, I'm not really, I mean, some people are, some people like to be a bit more meticulous and, you know, poke their seeds in and make little holes and everything else. But we're going to put a layer of saw on top of this. So it should be absolutely fine. There's a few bits and pieces just left on my tissue here. So what I might just do is just take that, sprinkle that in. I'm not sure if these are, yeah, most of these are wings and things, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, all of this will break down over time and, and uh, do its own thing. Just spread them out a little bit so they have a bit of space. Yeah, that's good. And then we just go back to our, our cocoa mix just in here and just put a very fine layer just on top. So thanks again for these, Jason. That's great. Uh, I always love adding new trees to my collection and uh, I love growing them from seed because I think you can see the progression of that tree over your lifetime and it is that shared relationship that you have with a tree you know anybody can go out and buy something you know that's not difficult to do but to start a tree from a young age from a seed or a cutting and grow it on over many many years you form a nice relationship with that tree and you know many many years down the line when you look at that that tree that bonsai you see this magnificent looking tree and you know that it's come about through all of the effort and time that you've put into it and given it and I just think that's a fantastic part of bonsai that we should all try to experience and enjoy. But anyway, guys, I think that's all for today. So as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next one.